LeBaron from Albion, New York. He's sharing the gospel message. One cup of coffee at a time. Good morning. Welcome to this episode of Refill with Randy. We have your favorite cup. Fill it up. Fill it up. And let's start this day right together. Well, good morning, friends. I am here with one of my favorite people, Chelsea Edwards. Um, I was privileged to be Chelsea's pastor for uh, 15 and a half years at Albion Free Methodist. Um, consider her a good friend, and I adopted her years ago as my spiritual mom. And, uh, and just as so many have gone through a lot of difficult things, especially these past couple of years, um, Chelsea is, has had her own things as well, and her family has. And yet she is probably one of the, uh, the people that I look to for encouragement because of her attitude and the hope that she has. And since this first week of Advent, the uh, um, theme is hope, uh, not because everything is going good, but because we believe that in spite of difficult circumstances, God uh, is still the God that keeps promises. Um, I'm going to ask her a little bit today about the hope that she has in Christ. And so... Uh, Chelsea, would you start just by sharing a little bit about um, just you know, your testimony in Jesus, and then um, and then we can look at maybe just these last couple of years, some of the specific events that took place? Well, anyway, I was brought up in a wonderful Christian home, my wonderful mom and dad. And I, these things were instilled in me from the mm -hmm. time I was a child, and they would never left me, although sometimes... I got out of the way, but God brought me back, and I, I would never give up the hope that I have in Jesus. Amen. Well, I, I, I know that you're not supposed to uh, reveal a lady's age, but would you be okay saying how old you are? 91. 91, going on 92? Yes, as long as God wants me to go. Uh, and, and I only share that because... Um, you have had a lot of circumstances throughout your life, which has been a very, very long life. And, uh, and I know, you know, there, there have been struggles and, and even before COVID, um, you'd had some struggles, uh, and debated about whether or not you were going to have some surgeries. And, and I thought maybe we, we could start with that. Uh, when you had your first hip replacement, you were 89? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and when, then when you were recovering, it's 90, 90. Okay. 90, I got them all oh yeah. Yes. Last year, 90. Yeah. Well, yeah. When some people were avoiding the hospital, you were running in and, and getting major surgeries done, uh, successfully, but you, you were at the villages, which unfortunately those of us in Orleans County know, um, kind of went rampant with, uh, with COVID and with many COVID related deaths there in the beginning, um, but, uh, but God brought you out of that and brought you home just before everything kind of got closed off, right? Exactly. exactly. So, um, it, it, just share a little bit from that point on, you know, what, uh, um, what some of the events that have taken place in, in your life, in your family's life and in that throughout COVID here, these last two years. Well, I, I was able to avoid COVID for a while, but just a few months ago, I did come down with it, but um, it wasn't that bad. Just a couple of days, and it, I got over that. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh, well, you had your you had your second surgery. I had my I had I had two hip surgeries last year, nineteen twenty. Yeah. Or 20, 2020, it is. <laughs> yes. And uh, came through them just fine. And I made up my mind I'm going to walk. So that's why I had them done. 
and she's been on the move. Yes, yes. Um, and not long before that, um, with Scott. Yes, my son Scott developed some kind of cancer in and around, not around his liver, I guess. And uh, I was really concerned, thinking that he might pass on. And I, I wanted to be sure that he was right with the Lord before he did. And he did. And uh, so when it, it made it so much easier for me when he did go, I knew where he was. And I was going to be with him someday. If anyone out there is... Uh praying for a family member, um, don't give up. No. Don't no. give up. And um, <clears throat> in, in any family members of Chelsea, I know that you are being prayed for um, all the time. Absolutely. Whether you're saved or not. Yes. Um, that's, that's, why, that's why I wanted to adopt myself into your family. I knew I'd be prayed for. <laughs> you are, Pastor. Um. So, I mean, you, you've had COVID, you've had surgeries, um, you know, you've gone, you've gone through periods of um, maybe depression, especially, you know, not being able to, to drive or get around as much on your own anymore. Um, obviously, when, when your son passed away, uh, for many people, just one of those things could deter them from continuing to have hope. And so why, why do you still have hope? I think these things made me stronger. I made it got a stronger hope because I just lean on Jesus. That's the way I get through it. If someone else was going through something today, what what advice would you give them? I don't know. Just ask for God's help because we can't do it on our own. And thankfully, we also, uh, God will... Will connect us with other Christians and others that will come beside us and help us. And yes, uh, we we were never meant to do this life alone, right? No, um, not at all. So, well, on this uh, first week of Advent, as we talk about hope, um, I'm just I, I'm thankful that you are um, a living embodiment of that hope, and uh, thank you for sharing with us here today. God bless you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I'm sure. Thank you.